I'm going to change that, and I'm going to make that two milliseconds. Now you notice it went off the screen. Why? I made my whole screen two milliseconds. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it 20 milliseconds. It made it nice and small, didn't it? Now you notice the, the injector looks a lot cleaner on amperage now, doesn't it? And what we're looking at is that's two milliseconds, four, six, eight, ten, all the way to twenty. If we use this one line right here, that starts at zero, this would be two milliseconds. I'm at about three milliseconds, aren't I, of time. And that's important to know the injector time. If we race the engine up, what's going to happen? I don't know if you can do it from there, can you? You notice, you notice it moved up. Okay. And that's what it should do. So here we're looking at, let's say you had a problem. Why are you going to use something like this? You know, never take the big guns out. And what I mean by never take the big guns out, no need to take a lab scope out if there's no need to. But let's say you got a misfire issue on this vehicle. You have a misfire. Misfires could be caused by a lot of things. Correct? That's right. It could be a crankshaft sensor causing a misfire. Could a be a flex mix plate. Mixture problem. Could be an ignition problem. Exactly. It could be a mechanical problem or it could be a fuel injector problem. Let's say this fuel injector had an issue. You see that pintle opening? Let's say the injector screen is clogged. Okay? If you know a known good. Now what do I mean by a known good? One nice thing is you can record stuff over here. You could save stuff, you could print stuff out. When I used to run my shop, I would always give the customer a copy and keep a copy for myself. I used to save WAV files, why? If it looked like this when it was new, okay, as it deteriorated, maybe it looked like that. When we had a problem, maybe it looked like this, okay? So if you see that it's supposed to be like that and you got this, there's your problem. When I teach fleet accounts, I do a lot of fleet accounts. When I teach a fleet, I always tell them, look, maybe your guys don't have a lot of training, so why not take good scan data information when the vehicle's new? Do it at idle, do it at 2,500, do it at 30 miles an hour, do it at 55, 60 miles an hour, and no, don't tell the cop I told you to speed in a 30 mile zone, you're doing 65, you tell them the G-man told me to do that, check the car out, no I didn't, follow the rules. <laughs> traffic rules. I get tickets just like you, so be careful out there. At any rate, make sure you do the comparison game. And that way it's easier to pick stuff out. Maybe you're new at doing stuff like this, okay? And by the way, you sometimes could have a good voltage reading, but amperage will not be correct, okay? Our amperage reading, we can do fuel pump current draw. There's so many things, again, we don't have time in this class. We got about 10, 15 minutes left, and we want to show you a couple of more things that you can do on your scope and take more questions. So let's ask Craig for questions, and we'll do a couple of moves here on the scope. Does the uh, Pegasus use known good reference grounds for the waveforms? Known good reference grounds. Um, I don't. I get a box that, but. Yeah, I don't I, know. I would think mean. that they do waveforms just like textbooks do, which is to go to the battery for the ground. Yeah, I, would, yeah. I would not think that they're going to some computer reference ground for that. I would think they're always going to go yeah, to the I'm, battery. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that question, the in all honesty. The um, standard thinking is to go to the battery for the ground. Yeah, and just be careful. If you go to the battery, you may be dealing with AC voltage from uh, a bad diode or something in an alternator. Um, you may want to go out to a chassis ground that's a little more buffered, but just make sure it's a good ground. I mean, chassis ground can be somewhere on the engine. And uh, I would think their wave file program that they have in there of known goods are from a standard ground, like you said. Right. How many channels does it have? This is a two channel scope. This is a two channel scope. Um, does, can it do a relative compression test? You could do relative compression on any scope, okay, by making sure you couple your scope to AC. You would have an AC sine wave. It wouldn't look like some pretty bars years back like uh, one manufacturer had, but guess what? You could actually do it or do it with current. 
You can use a big amp clamp around a battery cable. Vol or voltage or current on the battery cable. Right. Or, you know another way of doing it? You can do vacuum waveforms. So uh, again, that could be done with any scope, and yes, you can do it with the Pegasus scope. Um, we were asked whether the scope is live. This is live. Live, live. Look at all the wires. You want to see wires? Check it out. You want to see the scope? Let me do it. I can tilt it. You want to see it screw up? Oop, let me get back to here. There's the car. Pierre got out of the way. There's the car. It's connected okay, thought, to. Yes, that's the car. And notice, go back to the screen. It's frozen. And now I'll move it and I'll unfreeze it. And there it and is. By the way, race, race the car up again, Pierre. You'll hear it and you'll see it. The scope, the scope is live. As live as you get. Again, we explained in the beginning uh, the capability of the Pegasus is wireless. We are hooked up. In other words, in the training center here, we do have wireless networks. It hooks up to a secure network, an open network that you can get out to the internet. It also connects to the, um, the Pegasus little pod, I forgot what they call it now, the little uh, piece that comes off the back of the Pegasus that it communicates with, but again, with weather conditions and stuff, we decided, since there's so many people on, that we would make sure that we didn't have any issues, so we hardwired it. And we're wired right to the car. Okay, next question. Um. Just so you know, uh, under uh, components, uh, component tests, there is a uh, library for those things, for the waveforms. Oh, so under component tests, so if I go to component tests, right there, oh, there we go. So there's the signature test. And there you go. And it tells you, you know, where, where to put it up. So they do have some stuff in there. I'm sure it's not. It's not really a picture of the waveform. It looks like it's a setup of the, you know, how, how to do it, how to connect it to make it work. Instructions. There's a signature test on an injector. And it basically tells me what to do. I don't see a picture, but I'm sure uh, if you're familiar with the Genesis or the uh, other OTC scope uh, that I can't remember the name, uh, maybe Steve can help me out there. Um, they do have a library, and by the way, there's a button that does an automatic setup on it. Yeah, tap so, on the info tab. Info tab. Okay, there we go. Ah, look at that. Circuit. Diagram. Loading. I think it's over blown up. You have to shrink it down. Steve says he loves you. Exactly. <laughs> I love them back. <laughs> Component location, and there's the diagram. So there's information. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Now, when you're doing things like injectors or coils where you have multiples on one car, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to have all of them bad. So one of the things you can do is, is uh, scope all of them. Uh, and see what they all look like. You know, if five of them look identical and the other one's very different, there's your bad guy. And basically, and save them so you have a library. That's right. Uh, an article I wrote a while back in uh, Motor Age, I basically found that uh, just quickly with an amp clamp, and that means our little, our little green thing uh, right here, our current reading, we can go from one injector to another injector and just see if they match up. Maybe you have a pintle opening on a good car that's here, about 60-something percent, and another one that's down there. Well, guess what? Don't worry if it's high. Don't worry if it's low. Worry about the odd man out. 